The Pacific Ocean, 250 miles off the coast of the Galapagos Islands. In 1977, a deep sea submarine descended over 8,000 feet. Its mission? To investigate hydrothermal activity on the ocean floor. Marine explorer Robert Boward was aboard. He detected a dramatic change in the ocean's temperature. You know, we were not expecting what we found. We were expecting to find water. And we had a camera inside the vehicle, but it was, it was uh, just taking pictures, so we didn't know what we had till we came back. And we brought it up to the surface, and we processed the film, and we, got, we knew the spot where the temperature spike was, and it was like going to Disneyland. Probably one of the biggest biological discoveries ever made on Earth was made that day. Bauer and his team were the first to see it, face to face. Hydrothermal vents. Immense chimney-like structures, several stories high, spewing hot water geysers, black with minerals and nutrients. The temperature around these deep sea vents was a scorching 760 degrees Fahrenheit. And then an astonishing sight. Life, thriving without sunlight, a biological community never seen before. An exotic garden of marine life, species without eyes, others resembling Triassic era fossils over 200 million years old. What we totally were blown away by were these giant tube worms. Come on eight, nine, ten feet tall, and when you cut them, they bled human-like blood. I mean, when the submarine landed, there was a squish, and red blood came up around all the portholes. And that's how, how eerie it was. And then to find these extremely unusual creatures living in this oasis, it had no relationship to the normal life of the deep sea. And yet here they were living in this toxic water. But yet these creatures were thriving on it. And then when we dissected, I remember we took one of these clams, and we opened it up in the first place, whew, as soon as we opened it up, it stunk. It, it was full of hydrogen sulfur. A horrible smell. Rotten eggs. Yeah. And we opened it up, and then we looked, and, and it, didn't look, it, it looked like beef. It was red, bright red. And it didn't have an anatomy of a clam. It was like, what happened to the clam? Someone had taken over its body. And that something was a bacterium a tiny bacterium that had figured out over eons of time how to duplicate photosynthesis in the dark chemically through a process we now call chemosynthesis. And that was the discovery, that there was another life system on Earth that did not go by the book that you and I read, that was not living off the energy of the sun, but was living off the energy of the Earth itself. And that really opens up the ball game. I'll say. And these bacterium we now think are the largest mass of living things on Earth. That they're, they're in the rocks. Everywhere in the whole mountain range. Under the ocean. If you added up all the people and all the living things on land and add up all the creatures in the ocean and the th few things in the sky, and you got a number, so many tons, there's more tons of biomass. We used to just think, you know, the, the, the insects ruled That's the right, Earth. Yeah. Wrong. These bacterium. So where are these vents? All over the Earth. They were, imagine a baseball with a seam on it. That seam begins beneath the polar ice caps, goes down through the Atlantic, into the Indian Ocean, across the Pacific. It runs around the Earth for 42,000 miles. It's the largest feature on Earth, the Mid-Ocean Ridge. And it's underlain by literally tens of thousands of magma chambers. Is that where life began in well, the hot springs? Well, that's what people are now thinking. The, the biology books that we were reading have now been thrown away. Yeah, and there when I grew up, everything you had to be on the surface. That's right, and you had this soup, and the lightning bolt hit it, and you formed all sorts of amino acids and things like that. But now, what we think is that the the hydrothermal vents may have been the site of life on Earth. It's also given us a new prospecting tool for searching for it elsewhere with our own solar system. We're now looking at a moon of Jupiter called Europa, which we think has an ocean. We think it has underwater volcanoes, and there should be life down there. The question is, how smart are their clams? <laughs> Did hydrothermal vents give birth to the first primitive microbes on Earth? Perhaps. 
But one thing is certain. Their discovery challenged long-held beliefs about the conditions necessary for creating life. And once life happened, there was no stopping it. <laughs>